if you were yeah. a one and I'm a seven and we were just out in the world, it might, be, it <laughs> might get a little crazy. my name is Dana welcome back to my YouTube channel so today I am continuing my series on Enneagram types and today I am going to be talking about the Enneagram type 7 so today I have with me Crystal so Crystal is an Enneagram type 7 so do you want to tell us a little bit about the Enneagram type 7 from my understanding a type 7 is really the person that just has the enthusiasm for life like Everything is an adventure, everything is exciting, um, whether it be at work or um, for like personal. You just kind of uh, really like to take adventures and try new things and learn new things. And the moment that something kind of starts to feel stale, you kind of want to check out. How much do you relate to the Enneagram 7? Oh, like it's a hundred. Like it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a solid 10. Mostly because, and I've what I think, think is really interesting, I was reading about why the, the Enneagram numbers like exist and why people have their characteristics for their number and a lot of it is derived from something from your childhood that you're avoiding and for me it's uh, rooted in pain. So basically sevens, they're always looking for that next best thing or that next adventure because they never want to get stuck in a moment of like reflection or pain. Mm. And uh, when I learned that about the number seven, I, I was like, oh, wow, that's also kind of true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's a little bit about the seven, like in a nutshell. And then next, do you want to share a little bit about how we know each other, what our like relationship is? Yeah, so Dana and I met each other at the Study Abroad Center. Dana was first one of my student workers. She was a peer advisor and then moved her way up to uh, administrative assistant and then advisor. So what, we worked together for like, what, five, five years maybe? So I guess firstly, before we start like reading it, um, on a scale of one to ten, how well would you say a one and a seven generally like click? Well, it's interesting from what I know from the one and seven, we are kind of similar in certain ways because when a seven is at its worst or when they're stressed, they become a one. Mm. So um, I forget why that is, but I remember reading that. Yeah. So I think there is some, there's some of each other in ourselves. Yeah. That's really interesting because when a one is in their best, they become more like a seven. So now at this point, what we're going to do is we are going to spend a little bit of time kind of reading through some of the characteristics of a one and seven. And we'll kind of talk about how some of those relate to us. This is using Enneagram Institute and it says Enneagram ones and sevens have a particular complementary and reciprocal friendship. They are opposites who can bring something needed to the other person, thereby helping each other achieve new growth or driving each other further apart by playing on those weaknesses. I think in terms of the like opposites part of it, I could kind of see that. I feel like in a working environment, I feel like we are kind of opposites. Crystal is very like a big picture. Like I feel like you have a lot of ideas. Ideas for sure. I'm yeah. always like the first one to throw the ideas out mm -hmm. there, but I feel like you're better at executing the details. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like yeah. I feel like she could throw ideas out and I would be like, okay, but like you know, we're gonna need this, 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 and like, how are we gonna like make that happen? I feel like it kind of worked. Yeah, for, for it sure. It worked really well. I think especially like in, you know, a couple of the years, Crystal was in like a supervisor role to me. So I feel like it worked really well because you could have like a lot of those ideas and then I could like, you know, kind of play the role of like, okay, here's how we make it happen. Mm -hmm. Ones can bring a conscientiousness, orderliness, good work habits, methodical attention to detail, and a pleasure in maintaining excellence and high standards. While sevens can bring spontaneity, high energy, curiosity, an orientation towards fun and adventure, and a desire to try new things and not get hung up on trying to get everything done perfectly. Yeah, but see, that's where my stress <laughs> level comes in because I get really excited. Like we used to work on together doing these fairs and so I would get really excited about the fair <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, ideas, we can do this, we can do that. And then the day of the fair, I do care about the details. I would say like that's, uh, that, and maybe that's why I know I can't be an event planner mm. because once the event comes, that attention to detail, I want that. And it stresses me out though, I think, because I don't live in that like space mm. all I the see. time, if that makes yeah. sense. 
Both types can be initiators and planners, can be future-oriented and idealistic, although sevens tend to like to have multiple options and keep all plans loose enough so that they could be changed as needed. They bring freedom and spontaneity, whereas the one is more methodical and can help the seven stay on track. For myself, I can take those 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 last minute changes yeah, yeah. don't um, stress me out. Yeah, yeah. Like I can kind of roll with it. Yeah. Except for food. I can't do that with food, guys. If you're telling me we're having Mexican for dinner, I'm, we're having Mexican for dinner. Yeah, I can see that. That's kind of interesting because then at the last minute when you do have an event or whatever and all of those things change, you're like chill with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not. I'm like not adaptable in that way. <laughs> I like, like a plan and if it doesn't go according to plan, it like stresses me out. Yeah, it's really interesting. Okay, so for like work purposes, because I'm thinking about my job, my current job right now where it changes a lot. Yeah. And I feel like in my, out of the coworkers that I work with now, I definitely feel I'm the most fluid in that regard. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't bother me as much. But I could see that maybe stressing you out. Like mm -hmm. if your defined role sort of changed mm -hmm. regularly. Yeah. yeah, I would say that's very true. <laughs> I definitely love like a process and a plan. And I feel like when there's not, it does bring me quite a bit of anxiety. I'm not mm. super good with going into those. I probably would struggle in that kind of environment. Yeah. These two can be highly supportive of each other as long as the like goals are congruent as long as they're both working towards the same things and it tends to be a stimulating friendship for both because they can stretch each other and are fascinated by their differences yeah i would agree with that i feel like that's why even uh just not only working together mm -hmm. but i feel like we kind of grew a work friendship as mm -hmm. well because of that like yeah. i feel like i could come to you with like my crazy ideas and like when, especially when I was thinking of like, you know, trying a new job, you could kind of help me, oh, this is what you should focus on or this is sort of what your strengths are. Like I felt like you could really help me hone in on certain things. And I would say on like the flip side of that, I feel like when we like have conversations too, I feel like you can encourage me to be more like open-minded because I'm not like that. Okay, so now it's gonna go into some of the more negative attributes okay. of a one and seven friendship. Ones can feel that sevens are scattered and tend to fool around too much, overextending resources and overbooking themselves, promising too much to too many people. I mean, I could see that. I mean, just about mm -hmm. sevens in general. I mean, I think that is my, my weakness as a seven is I'm not very disciplined and I can be scattered, um, but I do, and I do overbook myself all the time. Uh, COVID has helped with that, but um, yeah, I think the, I think knowing though that about myself, like that's why I really loved learning about the Enneagram. Yeah. Because seeing myself through the lens of other people in that regard, it helps it has helped me trying to be a little bit more disciplined in that regard because I don't, my friendships actually mean a lot to me. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want my friends to think that they don't hold that place in my life because I'm like double booking or like yeah, scattered, yeah. you know? I think in terms of that, I could potentially see that being more problematic. I think that didn't necessarily occur for us so much though, because I feel like most of our friendship was within the confines of work. For sure. I feel like you, within work we're very like good at your job and like even though it was like more scattered it always like came together mm -hmm. you know what i mean no i do i mean i definitely i don't really know that is would be interesting i don't think i've really dove into like sevens at work mm -hmm. but i would say of all the places in my life i i have the most focus at work like mm -hmm. i am very purposeful and deadline driven like again probably because when I'm stressed, I want to be more like a one. So mm -hmm. I bring that energy to, to a workspace. Yeah. So I could see that, yeah, we wouldn't have that conflict. I think as we were like talking about this, I was thinking about like our offices and how it kind of reflects our like personalities. Mm. And that I felt like, like when Crystal works, I feel like she works like all over her desk. Like she mm. is like almost like scattered in personified. <laughs> but it is. <laughs> yeah. It's very scattered. <laughs> Yeah, but then I feel like for mine, I like 
have to like put something away and then work on the next thing and it's like one thing. Okay, and this I... is such a perfect example. Okay, so Dana <laughs> is a planner. She has like her paper planner. She's got one planner and it's like very organized and I really love this about Dana. So I was like, <laughs> let me emulate this. Let me go get a paper planner. Okay, you can talk to Dan, my boyfriend, about this. I now am on my like seventh planner what? because I'm trying to decide what planner I think works best for me. Okay. But I'm thinking I just, I like try it, the new planner for like a week or two and then yeah. I'm like, I don't like this planner. <laughs> But maybe it's just because I don't like planners. I don't know, but now my desk has like seven planners. Okay, on the other hand, sevens tend to see lower functioning ones as perfectionistic and ultimately as someone who needs to be loosened up a little bit. Yeah, I don't agree with that. I don't know. That's interesting. Okay, here's a question for you then. So outside of work, let's mm -hmm. say you're just socializing on the weekend. Mm -hmm. Are you the type of person, like, are you more of a homebody and you want kind of like, or you want more limited plans? Or do you, like, what does, yeah, what does that What does that look, look like? Yeah. So I make a lot of plans. Mm -hmm. So I would say that, well, again, outside of COVID times. Yeah, for right sure. Right now I do like nothing. But before that, I would say my weekends were like pretty booked, but I would say that they have to be like organized planned book. She sent me a calendar invite for this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't enough just to confirm via text. She's like, let me throw this on my calendar. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, that's exactly it. Okay. So like, I would say that I often have like back to back plans, mm. but then I like to like allow usually like a 30 minute window. So I know I'm not going to be late to the second So you're plan. scheduling your fun is what yeah. you're telling me. Oh yes. <laughs> I love schedule fun. You're more like free spirited. You can kind of go with the flow and that's okay. But let's say someone is like needing those plans set. Are you okay to like have fun within the confines of those plans or does that make you feel confined? Mm. Does that make sense? It does. I mean, I think the only way that I can explain it is I do think I thrive best, especially like in the work environment. I thrive best in situations where I can be creative and I can still have ideas. Mm -hmm. But let's just say, somebody said to me well this is the confines of how we're going to do business mm -hmm. and it's just do these five steps and you can't ever be creative with that i feel like that then would be hard for me mm, I um, but i feel like again maybe because i just bring my seven personality with me mm -hmm. i kind of just require like hey i'm gonna come at you with like 900 ideas yeah. As long as you're open to incorporating some of them, mm -hmm. then I think it works. After going through all of those in terms of like our friendship, how accurate do you feel like those were or how you know inaccurate? What's your overall kind of perception of it? No, my overall perception is it's pretty it's pretty accurate. Mm -hmm. I think I think that's true. Yeah, I think it's very true. I think especially the like positive attributes, I think were very accurate for us in a working environment. And so I think that those really shone through. I think in terms of the more negative attributes, I don't think those came through as much for us in our friendship, but I could definitely see, like you were saying, like in more of a relationship setting where those would be more um, prevalent or even like maybe like a friendship where you're seeing each other like every day or mm -hmm. like really consistently where that could come through. And lastly, is there anything that you feel like the world needs to know about Enneagram type seven? Yeah, I mean, I, I would just say the number one misconception about sevens is that we don't care about anything but like the here and the now and just ourselves. Like, I think people think sevens are selfish, but I would argue quite the opposite. I think sevens are really giving and they want to give their sense of adventure and their their joy of life to other people so you just have to understand that that's where they're coming from they want to take you along for the ride not bring you down i like that yeah i feel like that's pretty much all we have for today crystal thank you for coming on my channel and being in my video and for everyone else go ahead and tune in next week we will be talking about the enneagram six next week and if you haven't already go ahead and subscribe to my channel make sure to like this video on your way out and thank you guys for watching bye guys Music. <laughs> it just got louder and louder as we were. Oh, he's turning it down. Okay, okay. Okay, there we go. Okay.